Scott Ruick, thank you so much for sitting down with us. To start off, you guys are coming off a big top 15 matchup against Arizona State. I know it's a loaded question, but what's been the secret, secret for your success this season? Uh, just great players. You know, I mean, really, uh, it's been a combination of uh, talent, you know, and, and then just the experience that we've gathered over the last couple of years. You know, a year ago, uh, coming off that trip, we were heartbroken, you know, losing a really tough game. And it had been one of several close, tough games that we had lost. And it was the, just a young team figuring life out, you know, especially on the road. Um, and all those lessons have now, you know, accumulated and they've transferred into experience and knowledge um, and confidence, you know. And so this team competes at a high level and, and uh, knows how to finish now. Yeah, you've been here for four years. How is the how is this team progress? How has this program progressed under the four years that you've been here? Oh, I mean, you know, it's light years. It's it's, it's a, been a crazy journey, and um, you know, from a team that um, was expected to lose every night, um, and then just scrapped and found a way to be in every game, to a team now that expects to win every night. You know, um, it's been a fun thing to be a part of. It's been a a, a crazy journey. Um, you know, but it just proves that you align with, with great people, good things are going to happen. How do you take a team that, as you just said, is supposed to lose every night and have them become a team that wins every night? Well, uh, it takes time. You know, uh, initially, you know, you, you have to measure your success in different ways. You know, you can't pay attention to the scoreboard. The scoreboard's a liar. You know, even in the good times, sometimes it's a liar. You know, you got to focus on, you know, reaching your potential. You know, and so in the early days, that's what we did. You know, we focused on, are we making progress? You know, and let's celebrate those things. Um, win or lose, it doesn't matter. You know, and, and even now, uh, we're not coaching to the scoreboard. You know, now we just, you know, those experiences and our ability to, to gather talent talent, um, you know, has, has turned in, into wins, you know. Besides not focusing on the scoreboard, is there a mantra that this program lives by? What's your locker room talk like? We just talk about being tough, you know. I, I mean, that's the thing. We, we keep it simple. We take care of each other. You know, we, we come in and want to get better every day, and that doesn't change. You know, that's the same. That's what I coach, too. I've learned that over my career. You know, that keeps you from getting too high or too low. It just kind of keeps you the same. And, you know, uh, somebody once told me, um, you know, every time I come in the gym, no matter what the score, the score is, your team always looks the same. And I thought that was the coolest compliment, you know, uh, to that group. And, and I, you know, that's something that I want to continue to pursue. You know, I don't, it, we're not playing to that thing up there. You know, we're just playing the best we can, this possession. And if we do that, good things will happen. You just touched on this, but how would you define your coaching style? Uh, you know, I think in the big picture, I'm a teacher. You know, I, I, that's who I am. That's what I am. That's what I was uh, brought up to be. Um, I'm an encourager. I want people to, to reach their potential, you know, and basketball is just the avenue that, you know, is my background and is the one that I've been, you know, fortunate enough to get to be able to use to do that, you know. And so my style is I just want everybody to be at their best. I want to give them opportunities to, to find out what they're capable of. You know, and if you do that, uh, you encourage them, you support them, you hold them to high standards, good things are going to happen for them. You know, and if you've got a full team of that, uh, it's just the gym becomes the place to be. You know, and I think that's what this what we have, you know, and we have attracted people that want that. They want to be great. They appreciate, you know, the standards that we set. Um, and then winning becomes a byproduct of that. This is a fairly young team. You only have one senior, Allie Gibson. What's the leadership like? What's the chemistry like for this team? Phenomenal. Um, you know, I think that's, you know, the people that have been able to be around our program, ride our bus. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's amazing how sustainable it is. Uh, there's no highs or lows in that area either. They're best friends off the court. They're best friends on the court. It translates. Um, you know, and so that's part of the recruiting process, making sure that that's possible, you know, eliminating selfishness uh, from, the, from the whole thing. And, and so uh, Allie is a phenomenal glue player. She's, she was the perfect person at the perfect time for our program. Um, you know, she's somebody that gets along with everyone, has a relationship with everyone. Um, I wouldn't say that she's, you know, the most vocal leader as far as getting on her teammates and, and that type of, that's not who she is. She makes everybody feel included and that's vital, you know, and so Ali has that role and then we have others that lead in other ways and so it, it's, 
it, it's just a group that gets along at a level that that is hard to even imagine, you know. And so there's no bad days, and um, that makes this whole journey, which is the longest season in sports, uh, sustainable and enjoyable. As you mentioned, they do get along very well off the court as well. I know they have things like Grey's Anatomy nights and things like that. How does that translate over to the court? How do, how do you see that in their work ethic at practice and then when it comes for time for the game? Well, when those rela relationships are so deep like that, every day's fun. You know, I mean, you just have a, a bond that's so tight that, you know, you can handle, you know, getting after each other in practice and, you know, you compete so hard, you might want to beat somebody up in practice, but then, you know, well, that's, that's my buddy, you know, and so it, it's over and we move on and then, you know, the next thing you know, they're, they're at each other's house watching shows, you know, then they're back the next day to fight again in practice, you know, and, and so it, it's made us so competitive, but so tough, you know, and so they have each other's back, you know, and they fight for each other, they play for each other. Um, you know, and when you've got a team like that, you're going to have a resilient group um, and you're going to have a, a group that's tough to beat. Pretty much halfway through the Pac-12 schedule, the Pac-12 slate, what has been the most improved upon aspect of this Oregon State team? Yeah, I think just composure and decision making. Um, and that comes with experience. You know, it's just a natural progression, I believe. You know, uh, we've always been a team that competes really hard, you know, all five years. Um, that's not going to change. And but this group uh, is just so much more efficient in so many areas, you know, and one the biggest one is probably just overall decision making, you know, especially on offense. You know, a year ago, turnovers hurt us. Um, we were we ranked near the bottom or the bottom in, in you know, the most turnovers per game. And, and that's not the case anymore. You know, that's changed. We're shooting the ball better. We're taking care of it more. Uh, which just makes us tougher on that side of the ball, you know, and then we're, I think we're just, you know, similar to what we were. I think we're a little bit better defensively as well. What does this team still need to improve upon in the, the last half of the season? There's lots of things. Um, I, I, you know, as a coach, <laughs> you're never satisfied, you know, and so I look at our ability to transition with the good decisions. That's an area we need to be better in. Defensive transition, uh, half court defense, um, you know, there's reads that I don't think we read quite quickly enough. Um, you know, and then I think there's stuff that we can add to our system as we head down the stretch here. You know, so I think that's the exciting thing. You know, you look at where we are, we're in a good place right now. We've set ourselves up um, and given ourselves a great opportunity to have a great finish. Um, and there's still a lot of room to grow. This team is ranked number seven in the country, a historic season for Oregon State women's basketball program. Do you guys talk about that at all? Do you, do you acknowledge how well this season has gone for you? We congratulate them. You know, every week we, we, you know, that first meeting after the weekend, hey, congrats, look at all the things we did well, you know, and then it's right back to, okay, we, we're not where we want to be yet. You know, we haven't accomplished what we want. Um, it's a great start, you know, and I love the way we're trending. You know, we're playing very well. Um, I like that, but we've got a long ways to go, you know, and the neat thing is this team's not satisfied. You know, they haven't reached any goals yet. You know, they, they do, they're doing what I think they think they should be doing. You know, um, they know they have an opportunity to win every night and uh, they're doing that right now, you know, but we've got a long ways to go. And, and so it's easy to refocus them and, and move on to the next one. After winning such big games like the Arizona State game last week, do you have the feeling like something's got to give at some point there, there's got to be a downturn, a downtrend? Well, I'll be honest, I, don't, I haven't thought we've played great. <laughs> I really haven't. You know, you know we, we've won, um, but I, I haven't felt like, you know, we've just had that perfect game yet. I think that's still out there for us. Um, and I think the team feels the same way. You know, a week ago, we, we got that great win at ASU and, and the win at Arizona was a good one, too. The Arizona played a great game that night. You know, and, and Sid shot the ball as poorly as she had in her career that weekend. You know, and uh, everybody's looking around going, you know, I mean, we didn't play great overall and she wasn't the only one, but, you know, but then there was other things that we did very well, you know, and so, um, yeah, they're, they're, their mindset, they're just hungry. So you guys are in constant search for that perfect game then? Absolutely, you know, just constant search to just continue to improve and, and uh, you know, put the complete game together. You also went to Oregon State. What's it like coaching your alma mater? Oh, I mean, it's a dream. You know, it, it's been a dream to come back uh, the entire th time, even though even when it was incredibly hard, it was, it was just what a fun challenge to be able to, you know, resurrect a program at your school that you believe in, that you love, you know, that's been your school your entire life. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a great thing. And so it's been fun to talk about, recruit to, um, you know, and then there's nothing like putting a smile on the face of a Beaver fan for me. Yeah, what, what is driving you to, as you just said, resurrect 
this program from when you come here, from when you first came here. Can you talk about the development of the program? Well, what's driving me? Um, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know if it's any different than anywhere else I've been. You know, I, I've been brought up to, you know, leave a place better than you found it, you know, no matter what it is. And so, uh, you know, coming here, it's like, okay, how can we, you know, make this program elite? You know, that's what I did at my old place, um, you know, and uh, I just feel like I should do the best job I can, you know. And so coming back here, it's like, okay, no excuses. Let, let's make this program the best we possibly can. How good is that? You know, I didn't know that coming in, you know, but um, I'm somebody who believes anything's possible, you know, and so why not us? Why not here? Has there been a specific moment, a specific game where you've realized that it's all come together that's been rewarding for you? Well, uh, North Carolina this year was pretty special. Um, you know, the Tennessee game, even though it was a loss, was pretty special, you know, and what was different in those two games, you know, you're playing on a, a national stage, um, different eyes on you, you know, um, in an environment, in two environments where it would have been really easy to be intimidated. Um, and we have a, a team now that's not. We have a team that expects to win no matter where they are, no matter who they play, you know, and that's not to take away from any Pac-12 conference game because it's the same thing here. You know, there was a time where we had to believe in ourselves that we could compete, you know, in this conference. But on a national stage to, to take the court and just know that this team believes they should beat this team, you know, in front of 11,000 people or whatever. Um, so those two experiences this year were kind of, you know, they were kind of we've arrived moments, you know, I think for all of us and, uh, you know, obviously very special. Knowing that the team feels that, you know, as you just mentioned, they've arrived, where do you see them going for the rest of this season? Sky's the limit. Um, you know, that's how we view it and that's what we expect. You know, I think this team, if you watch us, uh, it's a complete team. You know, we've got the, got the imposing center that, that can play both ends of the floor at an elite level. And, you know, Ruth is uh, right now statistically the most efficient player in the country. Um, you know, and then you've, you've got an elite point guard that's a scorer and a distributor, and then you've got shooters, you know, all over the floor, and we, they buy into the defensive side of the ball, and so they're really playing well there. You know, so, um, you know, we fully respect everyone we play and know that we play in an, an elite conference where everybody can beat anybody, but at the same time, we feel like we can beat anybody. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's all of our expectation. Finally, how would you describe this team in one word? Hmm. <laughs> just fun. Just fun. And I mean, you know, my definition of fun is just, I don't know, that's a lot of words, but my definition of fun is just doing everything right. You know, they just do everything right. That's just fun. You walk in the gym, you know they want to be here. You know, they want to give everything they have. You know, they, you know they're fully invested to get to work with a staff that's fully invested, you know, and just have great people everywhere around the program. Um, you know, and they all want to win as bad as I do, you know, as the head coach. And, and there's no other word for it. It's just fun to go to work every day. And it's fun to prepare. It's fun to stay up late, getting ready for the next practice or the next game for these guys, because you know they appreciate it, and you're going to get the best they have. Scott, thank you so much. My pleasure.